Hello Gophers and welcome to this video where we will be learning how we can secure your web API is created in Go using JWT token. In this video we will be majorly covering the basic concepts behind JWT token, how to create a login API which would create a JWT token for you, how do you validate your JWT token in any other APIs apart from your login API, how can you implement a role-based authentication and authorization in your Go APIs? We'll also try to create a middleware which helps you in doing this role-based authorization and you can group your endpoints together to have uh, security based on one particular set of roles and you can create another group of APIs which, which will be allowed only for other set of roles. Now, without further ado, let's start by our video and before we move forward please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any notifications on any new videos or series that we put across now what is a jwt token jwt stands for json web token this is an open industry standard rfc 7519 method that is allowing you to securely transmit your your data between your claims data basically between your client and your server to validate if the authenticated user is trying to access your endpoints or not now jwt would primarily consist of three uh, sections and each section is separated by a dot the first part is always the header second part is a payload and third part is a signature now the header would consist of two major parts and it's, it's a JSON object, which is uh, in the end converted into base64 string and supplied to your JWT tokens first part. Now this part contains two major keys, that is algorithm used to encrypt your uh, JWT signature and the type of token that you are creating. So the type would be constant for us, it is JWT. The algorithms that you can use is n number of algorithms available there but uh, primarily we would be using hs256 for our purpose right now now the second part that is payload it, it consists of the data that you want to be present in your jwt token now this is used to identify a particular user uniquely so possibly you would keep some identification based on the roles that the user to whom you are issuing the token belong to so the roles that he has access to and name email address or any any set of fields that you want to be to be used whenever you validate the user back now the signature is the key part of the token now these two parts that we just uh, just saw that as header and payload can be easily decrypted by the user who have the token in hand but the signature is the security part that consists of every security thing that we have so the signature is being generated by en encrypting your header and payload put together by a dot separation if you can see uh, over here so base64 encoded a header plus a dot then base64 encoded payload now these, this string uh, combined together is then uh, encrypted using the private key that you have on your server. So this private key is normally generated and kept in some secure location on your server which is not easily accessible to any, any set of your program and that's not very easily accessible to anyone or any module of your program just some secure modules can access that so this signature is then generated now whenever you want to authenticate the whether this jwt that you have received on your server side you would again do the reverse engineering so what you will do is you will take the header and payload from the token and then again encrypt it using the same algorithm that you normally do so the algorithm that you would you would normally check it from the header part or if you keep it constant for any any users then then you know the algorithm well in advance and then again again supply in the 
private key and generate the signature. Now this new signature that you have again generated while validating, you will match it with the signature that you have received from the user side. So if these two match again, that means a valid JWT token you have received. If they don't match, then definitely there has been some uh, m some uh, sort of mismatch or something user might have done to uh, adulterate the token and you don't want that user to be in your server. So you would send in uh, a response of unauthorized access. Now with this, we have covered the basic concept of JWT. Now let's start by understanding how we can create a login API using the JWT package that is available in Go and, and create our JWT token. Now to create a login API, we have five steps to do it. First, we'll import a package that is helping us to generate a JWT token. Then we'll create a mod a model that is containing all the claims. We'll create a private key. Then we'll create a function that helps us generate the token. And then in the end, we'll create a login endpoint, which would eventually call the generate token and generate the token and send it back to the UI. Now, the package that we have to import over here is the package that I have listed on the screen. Now, I'll, I'll also mention this in the description of the video so that you can use that. So I have already done this package installation in my uh, project. So if you can see in the modules that I have uh, for my tutorial, I already have this package uh, available there. I also have the gin package, but you can use any framework that you want to create your APIs endpoints, or you can use the plain uh, HTTP package that is available. So that's completely up to you, but I prefer gin for now. So, so that's uh, what I will be using, but this package is something that you'll, you'll definitely need. Now, the second step that is creating a model, that claim model that we would be using to pass in the payload uh, of a JWT token. Now this claims model should be uh, implementing the claims interface from the package that we have recently imported, the JWT package. So let's create this model. Uh, so I've already created this model for us and uh, this is the model that I have created. So in this model, I have a company ID, a username, and a list of roles that the user has. So for us right now, I am considering that a user can belong to one or more roles for, for us, but this is basically on your use case. You might have one role that you create for uh, the particular user and that's it. And then we have a standard claims uh, model that we have got from the JWT package. So this standard claims basically consists of some uh, some properties that is audience, what is the expiry date, uh, if you need the ID of the JWT token, uh, sometimes you may need to store it on your database. So that's the JWT ID. Uh, issue, issued at, so where is it issued? So some ID in case you need. Issuer, who is the issuer? So this is normally the URL of your server, which is the issuing authority, basically. Uh, this should not be used before. So this token should not be used before what what particular date and time. So that is there. Any subject that you want in your token. So this is the basic claims, standard claims that is available. So we'll basically be using the audience and issuer for us and the expire Z. So this expires at contains when the token gets expired. So this depends on your logic that you want to keep the token for 24 hours, five hours, two hours, anything. And this is the claims interface that I was talking about. So this is from the package of JWT that we have imported. So just a method that is valid method we have to implement in our claims, which returns an error. So I have created the valid method for our claims. So if you see, so over here, what I have done is I have taken out the time in Unix format and I have said that uh, verify if the, uh, so this claims.verify is a method that is available to us due to standard 
claims that we have imported. So in standard claims, we have this verify audience, verify expires at, verify issued at, so those methods. So I have used the expires at, so I'll pass in the current date and time when we are trying to validate this token and set this true true so this flag states that do you do you really want to validate this or not so if you if you say true then only it would validate otherwise it would always by default pass uh, return true for us if you set this as false then uh, this is verify issuer so this is normally the issuer uh, ip address that i have kept as a constant for us but this is something that you would have to keep it so if you want to validate this any day and then again true is for if you if you want to validate the issue or not so if this all is passing then we'll return null that is no error otherwise we'll be returning an error that states the token is not valid so this method will not be used in the login api but yes we need to create this for implementing the interface of claims uh, okay and then we'll be creating a private key so the private key is a key that is on your server side and should be secured so normally uh, the private key that i have created i have created a token package over here and this token package i have created this token that i have and this ip i have actually coded over here and the ip i have again coded over here two places but this can be in some constant somewhere and shared between the two files so this is this is a private token this i have kept in this dot go file you can keep it in your config file or anywhere that you feel like so that you can keep rotating the so key then the fourth step is creating a generate token function now this generate token function would call two methods from the packet that we have imported for jwt one is jwt dot new with claims so this method would take in the claims that you want to set in the payload okay and the algorithms that you want to encrypt it and then signs string that this this method is used to actually generate the actual uh, JWT token that you want. So this is actually generating the signature part of your token and giving you the string out of it. So I have created a generate token method in the token package that I've created. Now this token package has just a one, just one method right now, which, which takes in a claims and expiration time uh, when do you want that token to expire and then that sets into the claims so issued at what time it is issued uh, who is the issuer expires it and then it calls the jwt dot new with claims so it would pass in the algorithm that you want so i am using sh256 uh, and the claims so this generates a token but not the signed token now We'll use token dot signed string and pass in a byte array of the private token. So pr private key basically. So this would generate the string. If we have an error, we'll return the error from the function. Otherwise we'll return the token string. So this is how we have generated a generate token function. The last part of generating a login API is definitely creating an endpoint. Uh, using Jin, Go Fiber, or any any frameworks that you wish. So what I have done is in my API .go, that's that's the entry file that contains the main package. So here I have created a, a post API of login, and I have created in handlers uh, separately so that I can keep the code more segregated and easy to read. So and my API would be running on port. 8080. Now this handler, if you go ahead and check, so in this handler, what I am doing is I am taking out from the context, I am trying to bind the login request model. So my request model contains the username, password and remember me. So I am trying to bind that model and uh, probably if the model is not being able to bind, I'll send in a bad request. If I am able to uh, bind the model, 
I'll validate the username and password to from my DB, but right now I have not integrated with a DB. So that logic I have not put in place. So I'm considering that whatever username and password I received is a valid username and password right now. Then I'll create a claims model and a company name I have set, I've set the username, I've set some roles. So these these are some fields that you would receive from your database once that username and password are validated. But we have done some hard coding over here. And to just secure uh, who is the audience for our token. So I've, I have tried to get the referer keyword, uh, referer header from my request. So this would be set in the audience and probably I'll be also validating at the time of validating my token. If the request is coming from the uh, same referer that we have set. So this is how I normally want this to be. But this is something that totally depends on you if you want to validate this or not. Now this is token creation time. I give it an expiration of 10 minutes. So token creation add of 10 minutes. Then I'll call from the token package to generate token and pass in the claim and the expiration time. If I receive the token, I send in a status OK. Now this OK is not a method that is given by Go, but I have created in my common method so that it kind of uh, abstract some basic functionality of statuses and the code looks very pretty clean. So this is this would send in a standard response model which would contain the data status and a generic message for my API if the status is OK. Otherwise for a bad status it would send in the errors. So there can be n number of errors that I would want. Let, let's say if we are doing a validation we have five or 10 errors and status and a message. So I send in that uh, response from here. Now let's try and run this API here and see. So if my API is running, if I go to my Postman, I try to hit the API, so login API. So for this username, name and password, I've got a token generated. So in the data, I've got, got this. Now, if you go to JWT.io, there we have a mechanism where we can check the basic token that we have generated. It would not uh, verify the signature, but yes, it would decrypt the header and the payload for us. So if you see header is 256 and in the payload, we have got the company, username, rows, audience, expiration, issuer and everything in the token. So this is how you can uh, generate your token and your login API works. Now in, in the next step, we'll be understanding how we can validate a token. Now to validate a token, we'll be generating a middleware, which would be applied on all the further APIs that you would create. So probably we'll stop over here for some time and the three topics that you see on the screen that are still uncovered, I'll create another video for that. And just uh, by the meantime, you can create your own login API just to have your hands dirty before we actually start validating the tokens. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching the video. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any further videos or any new series that we put across for you guys. Also, we would like to hear from you in the comment section of any new video series or any any changes that you want us to do in the way we, we put the videos across or any special topics that you guys uh, wish us to put for you.